now live and we are in a session to discuss ensuring new snippets and uh, become facts within an information war this is part of a horasis global event which is taking place today that is 19th may 2022 and we are all very much eager and keen to get this session started off i'll have a quick introduction of our guests uh, we have with us professor batento bats uh, dean and professor at walter cronkite school of journalism and mass communication at the arizona state university he has a 30 year career span uh, journalism strategic communications philanthropy and higher education um, batento is also the a uh, doctorate in higher education management from Hampton University and uh, the Cronkite school is consistently recognized as one of the very best in journalism and communication education so what i'm going to do without uh, further ado is to request uh, batento to give his preliminary thoughts on the topic and for about 3 minutes and then i'll come to the other two panelists introduce them and also ask them to do the same so batento over to you for your preliminary thoughts and then we'll come again to you once again later. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be to be here uh this evening and to share this time with with everyone and talk about this an important topic and the way that we come at it is that we have a global crisis and it's appropriate that we're attending this you know, this conference and talking about this here. We have a global crisis as it relates to misinformation and disinformation and let's just say we have a uh a decline in media literacy and so that's a crisis it's a, it's a national security crisis it's a crisis in our communities it's a crisis in our relationships with, between people because we're we're struggling to get people just to call us around basic facts and really to be able to ascertain you know if they're getting their information from useful and viable sources and in how what do we do to confront misinformation uh in in the in the mainstream and it blunts the impact of a lot of great work it blunts the impact of higher education of of research it blunts the impact in journalism of 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 investigative journalism or community journalism where you know people just don't necessarily believe what they read see and hear and it it comes to the point where they question uh what what they're reading seeing and hearing and whether whether or not it is coming uh with an agenda And so we've got a problem uh because if we are facing, you know, a, a national security crisis or a weather related crisis or or any sort of crisis, or even just again just sharing this basic facts, uh how do we ensure that people are going to uh believe believe that and being able to bring people together. And so we have to find a way to break beyond our barriers, break beyond the barriers of our countries. uh break beyond beyond the barriers of of our disciplines uh it's not this is not just a journalistic problem this is a this is a problem across all industries uh this is a problem that everyone should be concerned about and i think that the best way that we can do this is to really get more people to understand about the importance of media literacy and understanding the importance of being able to judge whether their their primary sources of information are valuable sources uh if the if the information is accurate and how do how do we again train people to do that and then not, not only that but to um point out information that's bad or point out bad sources and to root them out and 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 then to point people towards more reliable sources of information and that is much easier said than done that is not an overnight fix we didn't get here overnight and it's going to take a long time before we uh you know we're really able to see long-term tangible results but we have to put a, we have to put a stake in the ground and say that this we have to address this now uh because if not it's only going to get worse so i'm glad to have the opportunity to discuss this important issue with you all and look forward to everyone else's comments but endo thank you very much that really sets the context very well for this uh, discussion breaking barriers bringing people together easier said than done absolutely but what you said is uh, very much in tune with the thinking of uh, the organizers and what they uh, had envisaged while planning this session very important session on the information war and uh, how we can actually bring people together 
Alfredo Morales is our next speaker, and uh, he's principal research scientist at Red Zone, visiting scholar at MIT Media Lab. Uh, named the innovator under 35 by MIT Technology Review on Espanol in 2018. He's passionate in understanding complex social behavior by analyzing big data from social media and alternative sources using networks, AI, and machine learning. Alfredo, I think Bajento was absolutely uh, spot on and uh, he stuck to the time uh, limit as well. So I think you'll take a cue from him. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for connecting and for discussing this uh, important topic. And thank you for the invitation. Um, yeah, in my, my view, um, I've been studying and researching the behavior of social systems uh, through the lens of complexity and complex systems um, for a while. And in, if there's something, one big lesson is that the, from studying systems and, and social systems is the, the complexity of any system depends on two parts, right? Like the parts of the system, the constituent parts, the relationships or the capacity to make relationships. And we live, it's sort of like your net worth is your network, but not just in terms of, um, let's say human capital, but just like in terms of all the different behaviors in which you can engage in, it's gonna be always dependent on conditional on the people and the information that you are exposed to. And I say this because while looking at communication networks on internet, people thought that, you know, social media and these kind of things will bring people uh, together. And the reality, when you look at the data and you observe the patterns of communication, you see that people are, I mean, and we were been doing this for, for a long time, uh, people are drifting apart in this media. They are not really, um, you know, it's not this big village in which everyone has access to everyone's information. It's actually highly polarized, it's segregated. We see that there is a correspondence with political preferences, but also depending on where you live in the city, you know, and um, all, all, all sort of uh, external fragmentation that gets um, reflected and even uh, exaggerated on on uh, internet given the, the fact that you can just choose who you see and who you don't and uh, it's it's a part it's a process that's been part of the human uh, kind uh, for a long time that's how languages and cultures exist right like you have groups of organization and the flow of information but nowadays uh, it's a big deal because it's global and and um, information can spread really easily and and a lot of like crazy stuff can happen like it's been happening lately and because there's people who always will be uh, you know behind the manipulation and using the truth to manipulate people and manipulate the masses so um, now they have new tools tools that are, that are big and that, that, that have huge impact and huge effects um on 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 the behavior of people the behavior of social system you know in general and 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 um, what we're facing and, and and the things that can happen tomorrow and communication of course is critical and is essential for any type of negotiation social mutual understanding win-win solutions and for everything so how to achieve effective communication in a world where you know we have different fragments of society whose narratives are different and you can see that in the data the narrative is different the words they use are different the news outlets are different, you know what I mean? It's a different view, different perspective of things. Well, it's a, it's a huge challenge. And I agree with the previous speaker that the solution is not easy at all. And it starts with education, starts with literacy, starts with choosing better sources, understanding, you know, better and, 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 and just gaining depth, in my opinion, you know, by reading and, 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 and educating yourself such that you're not such an easy prey for um, these sort of things um, online. These and other things also, because honestly online, they're just trying to fish every bit of information they can from you so they can spy and they can sell all kinds of stuff and um, et cetera. So um, it's a, these are new tools, you know, which a lot of power, but we're still learning how to use them, um, in my opinion. Yes, uh, in fact, that was also very spot on, Alfredo. I must thank you as well, because You've nailed the issue very well. Uh, technology has evolved, but uh, people with different narratives, different backgrounds, different uh, regions have to uh, come together and uh, learn to live with this uh, new technology, but uh, in, in, an, in an era which is unfortunately a little parochial and uh, also, you know, living in silos, 
despite the technology. So we need to be universally aware. I think you really uh, said it well when you spoke about education and awareness. Our third speaker is uh, Fulco Treffers, and uh, he's founding partner of Row 3 k uh, which you'll have to correct me with the pronunciation, Fulco. Rosquit. Yes. Rosquit, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Urban question for Ukraine. Uh, lead architect and urbanist at uh, 12N Urban Matters. Head and tutor at MA uh, Kharkiv School of Architecture. Specialism, social urban design and participation and communities are his areas of specialization. Fulko, what is your perspective on the topic? Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about that. Uh, I'm not an expert in data and communication, but I'm a, a founder of this uh, coalition of Roskvit. And within our coalition, we have a few universities uh, and researchers within the team. And uh, they are uh, yeah, part of this uh, expertise group that, that help all the different topics about Ukrainian situation right now. Just a small introduction about uh, uh, Roskvit. Uh, we're an urban coalition for Ukraine. It's a group of experts in urban planning, regional planning, housing, heritage, all those topics, economy, law, energy, circularity, sociology, policy making. And we're working in an open source network in close collaboration with students and uh, citizens in Ukraine. Um, we're a mixed team of specialists of Ukrainians and non-Ukrainians, and we were founded, well, actually five weeks ago. Uh, so in a huge speed, as is now everything in huge speed in Ukraine, we set up our own uh, organization. And we are developing methodologies for rebuilding Ukraine and uh, the physical infrastructure of, uh, of, the, of the cities. And already for after the war, but also during the situation right now uh, in, in parts of Ukraine that are possible to start rebuilding. Um, we learned from the past, we have got a, quite a huge group of researchers who are somehow related to post-war rebuilding. And um, we have our yeah, future-oriented ways to, to develop uh, in co-creation, let's say, a, a better version of Ukraine. And uh, we do this also by organizing public debates and uh, stimulating uh, local action plans. And also, which was mentioned before, uh, by having this capacity de development, capacity building, uh, education, students, uh, students' life. And this is also where this Kharkiv School of, Edu of Architecture comes from. Um, it's, of course, a very delicate topic to already think about this reconstruction, the war is still being fought, and, and also here, uh, communication and social media is, 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 is a strategic thing to handle uh, uh, both ways. So where to get the information from, what do you know, what do you, what do you know for sure, what not, and the other way around, what can we tell already, what can we advise, uh, it's, it's, it's very delicate. and. Uh, what we know is, by all means, we have to be ready when there's a possibility that uh, that we can really start rebuilding on a bigger scale. Uh, and this, getting to be ready, is a huge task. It's not only about buildings and infrastructure, uh, but it's also about uh, facing a new geopolit uh, geopolitical situation, about new climate changes uh, and, and challenges. And uh, especially also about this new position that the communities in Ukraine uh, have been taken. Um, I think this is also where where our uh, interests uh, inter interact because this community in Ukraine, the power of these local, very very uh, interesting communities that have been uh, shown to the world in the last few weeks. Uh, this is uh, this is a power that we think that should be taken into the future, and where also. Uh, all information and all communication, all decision making also comes in. And this is where social media, online communication, etc., can help. Or also, my specialism of participation can be of huge impact. Thank you, Fulko. Well said as well. I'm uh, really impressed with the panel. I must say that this is my probably my sixth or seventh Horasis event and uh, chairing and moderating sessions, but none more impressive than this panel. So, gentlemen, congratulations on what you are doing and the way, way you've succeeded in your careers till now and you're shedding the light for the others to follow. I'm going to ask uh, specific points now, uh, a little bit related to what you said, B of you, and then you can add something else. We'll follow the same format of about three minutes in each round. 
and I believe we have two more rounds to go. So uh, in this next round, I would uh, request Batento to focus more on the education part because you're a dean and you're a professor. And, uh, you know, we are preparing the youth for tomorrow. Uh, I, too, am a visiting professor with a university and I, I address the youth all over. The thing is that they are uh, developing their careers in an era of uncertainty, of at times of vehemence, of aggression, and uh, information war uh, is a part of that. So what do we do to, to nurture the future, but into in a balanced manner, if I can ask you? So, you know, the, the challenge here is, is, number one, students today, and not only students, but really everyone, is getting a lot of their information by way of these things right here. And that's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But they're also utilizing social media. And everything on social media isn't bad. Uh, and everything on social media is, is not inaccurate. But a lot of it is. And so we have to divert or find a way to divert their attention to other sources of information and other platforms to find their information, uh, platforms that don't have a particular agenda. And I think the best way that we can do that, some of the research that I've done in the past is it really gets into social networks and gets into social capital and people who have a lot of social capital within social networks and their ability to move those networks by way of their influence. And so I think that we have to empower people on a college campus that, okay, you are, you carry a great deal of social capital and a great deal of influence within your network. How do we leverage that for good? you know, in the purposes of sharing information and best practices about where to get information. I think it starts there. I think that as professors and that we have to acknowledge that there's a generational gap and that we, although research may show, hey, that we can build connections across these platforms on, on social media, the fact of the matter is that the younger generation has always sort of skipped to the next platform, whatever they felt as though it's, you know, they see their mother or their aunt or their dad hanging out there. And so the best way to make the connections and to leverage the social capital is amongst their peer set. And so finding people amongst the peer set who are respected, who are trusted, and I think it's really doing it from a grassroots level there rather than it being sort of from top down or looking as if there is, you know, the... Uh, older generation is, is really trying to guide this. Um, I think that, the, the again, the, the, the infrastructure exists to do this, but, again, it's just it's, it's going to take a concerted effort, and it's going to take some research and testing to see what works and then sharing those results and for those results and, that, and for those um, things that succeed to be replicated and then what's not to really, you know, test and try some other methods. But it's going to take a concerted effort. And like, I'd like to see multiple universities work together on this and for it to be really a transnational type of thing. So that's a long answer, but it's a really complicated uh, situation. Yes, but I, I really like the idea of universities working together. And, you know, today in today's era, it is a seamless environment if we allow it to be. Technology can be all pervading. We can we can be in touch with somebody from Addis Ababa or Kyoto or anywhere in the world, and we are connected. So my next question is to Alfredo, who's a technology expert, and uh, to bring in uh, that technology and use it in a wholesome way to create that awareness and education, which you spoke of first time, uh, Alfredo. So how do we uh, bring in these people together using technology or even otherwise what is the way forward and what are your views on uh, doing that? Yeah, thank you very much. So the, the, the challenge is big, right? Because um, technology, technologically speaking, is not either an easy problem to discern what's truth and what's not from a data point of view. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, no? Like, uh, let's say, just technically speaking. 
But second, um, who's the referee, right? And, and if it's something that it's centralized, either in a private company or in a governmental agency, you know, centralization leads to inefficiency, creates space for potential abuse of power and a bunch of things that are, are problems that we don't have and can be created on top of new problems trying to solve, you know, like today's problems are yesterday's solutions, right? And we need to somehow also break that cycle. And I agree that the solution cannot be top down. It must be bottom up, not not just for, for uh, the reasons of engaging younger people, but also in terms of the type of task that we are dealing with, because... We need to have a decentralized force, you know, decentralized action, collective action, but decentralized that are filtering information. And um, among my notes, coincidentally, I also um, thought of not only education, but the value of grassroots, you know, and crowdsourcing. And, but crowdsourcing, not just blindly, but also uh, taking into account the the social capital and the value of the social network because if you if you think for instance on social media if you could have let's suppose just another feature in the tweet that says whether people uh, or, or some people that have a, a let's say access a, a rights to to validate information and people you know the bunch of journalists that are very good at also on those media if they could validate information, if if these pieces of information could have a, a validation that comes from, you know what I mean, the, the the platform rather than just from an algorithm, I think that it can increase a lot the the, the quality of the information that it's been presented and the way people engage with um, with it. So, I I, I see a, a solution for this in the in collective action and technology can always help in terms of helping to coordinate, to, you know, share information. At the end of the day, the more visible things are, the better, you know. There is, there is something that happens on, on data, patterns on data, and it's that it's very hard to mimic what's organic, what grew organic. For instance, let's suppose you go to one of these pages, these people with a 1,000 or 2,000 or I don't know how many followers. If you see somebody that has millions of followers but you go on their tweets you know and they have just a couple likes or a couple retweets you notice there's something off you know what i mean there's certain amount of things you can imitate you know but you cannot really just replicate what's an organic emergent behavior you know and, and something like that can really differentiate posts that come from bots that others that come from real people you know and from the real deal so you you can have many indicators of uh, of these pieces of information, where they're coming from, the way they are spreading, uh, and so on. And from there, get like health metrics and stuff. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, all of those things, what they can do is, I mean, the, the best way to proceed is just to give visibility to all of these things and let people, you know, decide uh, rather than having a, you know, weird censorship on top that tomorrow you don't know who's in charge of those offices, you know what I mean, and what gets uh, filtered and doesn't. Uh, my humble opinion. Well said, Alfredo. I totally agree. And uh, there are people with, uh, I mean, there are bots and there are people who, if I may use a double meaning, uh, they have bought followers. <laughs> so, you know, it's like um, we, we, we live in a world where it's very difficult to discern as to what is correct and what is not. Impressions are often overpowering and uh, impressions create a lot of uh, misgivings and misinformation at times. I've been a writer and speaker myself. I have a following among the youth, but I know that if we do not uh, give the right message to the youth, especially, they're going to be confused as hell. And uh, that is something which this world of today with all its all pervading information flow is uh, creating more confusion than solving problems. Uh, Fulko, I must ask you this question and it may be a little uncomfortable. You are from Ukraine. The war is on and we're talking about the information war here. So what is the attitude that the rest of the world should adopt? What is, what is the information uh, that is credible, that is coming out? What should uh, you uh, and we do to ensure that there is more harmony? Of course, we're not talking about the war itself, but especially in the information space, that, that there is harmony and balance. That's quite a big question. Um, <laughs> 
I come back to this question. I first um, uh, start with um, uh, an analysis of uh, the Ukrainian situation, why they are fighting. Uh, it's my humble personal uh, analysis, but I think it's interesting connecting to the things that the previous speakers have said. Since 2014, there is a, there is a war already in Ukraine. It's in the eastern part and it was also in Crimea, of course, in a different way. Uh, and uh, I met in 2015 already quite a lot of people. So uh, one year after this war started, who have been uh, gone from their original city, Donetsk, for example, to Kiev, and their parents or their brothers or their close friends, they stayed. And pretty much all of those people, they said the same thing to me already after one year. It's not possible to talk to my parents anymore about the situation. They don't believe me that the situation in Kiev is quite okay or maybe even very good. They don't believe that we have medicines here. They don't believe they have stuff in the, in the supermarkets. They don't believe we have uh, whatever kind of safe uh, water uh, or anything. Even when I show them on videos or by being in FaceTime or whatever, if, it, if I show them, my parents don't believe me, so we don't discuss it anymore. So within one year, the information uh, is separate them so much that the close friends, so these peer groups, as, uh, as, were, as were mentioned, they, they were separated so much that it was not possible anymore to communicate. And I think this is actually the thing that they are fighting for. The thing that they already seen for eight years, that if they, fight, if, if they won't fight uh, against the situation, the data or the, 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 the media, the, the communication will take them over as, they did, as it did to, uh, to their parents, to their close friends. And uh, this is something for me which is uh, uh, so difficult to see. It's hard to understand uh, that, that you can change so much when you have two pr pretty much similar lives and within one year you have a totally 180 degree different uh, opinion about, about your situation. Um, uh, even though we, were trying, we are still trying to, to use it in, in, a, in a better way, whatever... Uh, situation we are as humble uh, as a humble group we use the data for uh, from social media to 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 collect the information what heritage really is or what uh, what people think about uh, cultural uh, damages or natural damages we see it from data in, in social media we see it in telegram we see it in all those groups there's a group of people now cor corrected uh, connected to MIT uh, professor uh, uh, Brent Ryan, uh, and they're they are collecting these data and analyzing on it so that we have the information where to start, what to priori prioritize when, uh, when the war is over. So things like that, you know, we do it in the other way around. Um, so we use these data, we use the communication uh, ourselves. So what should we adopt, as, as you were asking, uh, Vivek, it's, uh, um, uh, I think it's, it, it's, it's actually, it, an, uh, an amazingly difficult question. Uh, what I uh, try to do in, in Ukraine is uh, to to just trust uh, uh, on, on a small network around me and making this network bigger and bigger. This is this is the only way how we can work. Can we just inform in a proper way, in a totally transparent way? Uh, we show what we do uh, as a group, as a coalition, but also we show. Uh, those other uh, uh, initiatives uh, as much to the world to see, okay, this is what is going on here. It's, it's, we are not talking about military issues, but we are, this is what's going on in, in about humanitarian aid. This is what's going on about uh, reconstruction ideas. And please join this, join this debate. So we are more on a participational level. We try to, to have everybody included. We try to have all the bottom-up initiatives also give a podium. And then from there on, we, we continue uh, uh, the discussion. Holko, very well said. In fact, uh, I know how painful uh, some of it must be for uh, your country and uh, countrymen, uh, nationals. Uh, it's it's a very uh, difficult time for many in many reasons. And close on the heels of the pandemic, which shook the world and you know really made a lot of us think. Uh, people got into depression. Uh, unfortunately, the youth are among them, and I've been working with a lot of them and. On top of that, a war, even if it's happening between uh, 
two countries. There are so many countries involved directly, indirectly. And uh, everybody across the world feels the pain of a war happening anywhere in the world. And, and uh, I have friends uh, from your country who I'm in touch with. Uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch after this panel. So I, I hope for the best. Uh, we hope that things sort themselves out very quickly. Just, just uh, a small remark. I'm, I'm Dutch. I'm from the Netherlands, but I feel so much Ukrainian. I'm 50% Ukrainian, maybe. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're in the Netherlands, and uh, I didn't know you're 50% Ukrainian, but that's that's fine. Uh, we, we are happy to <laughs> know. Uh, the thing is that we have a last round to go, gentlemen. So what I would suggest is, if you'd like to add anything that you haven't added yet, that is one. The other is any takeaway that you feel uh, that uh, Horasis should uh, uh, highlight through this session and any other points that you feel are relevant to the going forward era. Uh, as as a chairman, chairperson of this uh, session, I'd like to add that, you know, the minutes are more important than the meeting, I often say. So, you know, whatever we are talking about will dissipate if we don't uh, concretize our recommendations. So as best as possible, if you may, and I'm putting you on the spot, one or two takeaways from here will be very, very apt. But into, as usual, we follow the same batting order. I follow a game called cricket, which uh, unfortunately I don't think your countries are very interested in, but India is. So we follow the same batting order. So Batento is the first batsman of that order. Go ahead. Yeah, I think cricket over here is known as baseball. But, uh, <laughs> but that's all right. And in there's an insect known as a cricket as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I think that people need to be educated on the power of media. And that media is a very strong is a very strong force. And that it can be used in something that I've made the um, analogy is that media media are, are a lot it's a lot like the power of nuclear energy. And nuclear energy can be reused for very positive means. Uh, it's a clean burning energy. It's efficient. Uh, it, 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 it works well. But we also know that nuclear energy can be used to kill. And media is a lot is, is the same. You know, when, when functioning properly and, and in the hands of people who, who have good intentions, it can be very positive. But at the same time, people with bad intentions Media can be used uh, to divide us. It can be used to, you know, for nefarious means. And so, number one, I think we need to educate people on the power of media in our society and recognize that it's only become stronger by way of, you know, everybody has the ability to get a message out there and to connect with an audience. And so we have to understand the responsibility that goes along with that. You know, here in America, we have the First Amendment. And I'm a First Amendment purist. I believe that, you know, everyone should have the ability to exercise their First Amendment rights. That's what the Constitution provides. And we have to take the good and the bad that goes along with that. And then we have to educate, again, on the responsibility that goes along with that power that we have. Um, and so that would be one takeaway, is that we, I think we need to have an education campaign on that. We, you know, much like we, we had... Um, for people understanding, you know, creating an understanding about the dangers of smoking. I think we have to understand the dangers of misinformation and utilizing our, our, our platforms for nefarious means. And so I'd like to see that come out of this, is that what's, what are some solutions that we can utilize so that people understand the power that they have in their hands? We gonna, I gonna. We don't hear you. Okay. That was my fault. Well, very well summarized, Batento. It's uh, something that we need to achieve to some moderate levels, if not uh, the perfection, which is never possible in the real world. So, combating misinformation and uh, trying to bring more clarity, more more awareness, more working together is probably the key. Uh, but I'm going to Alfredo now, and uh, what are your takeaways or the ones you would suggest for for the rest of the world from this panel? Thank you very much. You know, there is a point that was briefly mentioned at the beginning. 
um, and and we didn't make much emphasis, but it's uh, a reality, and it's the the, pro the implications um, in terms of defense and and uh, security for for many countries. We we rushed into globalization, you know, too fast, and honestly, technologically and like. Uh, geopolitically and, and economically, etc., became too, too tight and without any kind of borders, you know what I mean, in many ways, like inf with information. So nowadays you have external, I mean, a foreign governments uh, manipul influencing elections and the, and the electoral uh, opinion, you know, of the population with such power, you know, that uh, it's really scary because... Um, um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a big vulnerability that the, it exists nowadays. And I'm afraid that the path of least resistance goes towards a more restricted environment uh, online just because it, it's such a complex problem with so many fronts that it's so hard to, to control, um, which, which is something that can be seen in the future, you know, further fragmentation, uh, not just one big internet like the one we've uh, enjoyed so far. Um, or who knows, uh, to be honest, it's so unpredictable that it's, it's very hard to know. But the role that the social media and, and countries like Russia, you know, have had over many countries, my country, Venezuela, but also in Ukraine, even during the war, you know, it's something that's pretty scary and uh, very high tech to manipulate videos and all of these things to achieve, well, you know, like uh, campaigns with a lot of economical interests and everything. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a weird place that the, the world we're heading to, to be honest. I don't think there is any easy solution and, and um, I'm afraid that freedom is not really granted uh, in many ways. Very well said. It's it's a balance of uh, cynicism and optimism that I feel from all of us. And uh, we have to be realistic, but uh, we have to be obviously achievers in the, in the future. We cannot just lay our arms down and say that, okay, we can't do anything about the world. Let it uh, go itself, uh, hang itself or whatever. So it's, it's, a, it's a balance of uh, the way forward and uh, the reality, the stark reality that we face. So, Fulko, what would you like to add as a takeaway from this session and anything that you'd like to mention in addition to what you've already done? Yes. I, I, while listening to, to, this, to this discussion, I, I thought about um, yeah, our organization, Rosquit, is, is, is about connecting in a way. It's connecting Ukrainian international professionals. It's connecting long-term strategy and short-term needs, connecting urban planning, infrastructure, architecture, but also to soft software uh, uh, of, of, a, of a cities or countries development. And it's also connecting researchers and designers. So this is, this is a very interesting, this, this happened organically, but this is very interesting to see those different fields which are very often uh, separated and with, connected with one per person sometimes, but we somehow have the feeling that we have to stick together. And I had just a, a few seconds ago this idea, uh, also we should maybe connect to different media. So when Ophelia was saying we should, it's gonna be fragmentized maybe a little bit more, it, it's, it's definitely possible. It, it's, it's, uh, it's also possible to just maybe to have the, uh, the aim to, to connect those different media, to connect those different bubbles, to connect those different groups. And that, that could be, our, our, our media goal uh, in a way because this disconnecting this this, uh, this definitely is something that didn't help Ukraine uh, and that is that's for sure yes so on that note uh, it's up to me to generally summarize what we've discussed and uh, although there have been some specific inputs very brilliant ones from all three panelists I think um, our uh, endeavor has been successful in discussing the matter threadbare. We are all from different continents, I realized originally. And uh, Alfredo just said that his home country is Venezuela, right? Uh, if I heard. So we represent four continents of the world. And uh, we, we have probably covered uh, pretty much of 
the topic uh, in its comprehensive uh, nature. What what is the problem in my view? To put it um, succinctly, is the problem it lies in the mind, the minds of leaders, not so much of people. And it is a lack of leadership that the world is facing. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have statesmen. We have probably opportunists leading countries. And a large number of important countries in the world are led by people who perhaps should not be there, uh, to put it mildly. But there are some who are making a mark, who are uh, holding the fort, who are leading from the front. And and in fact, uh, some of the smaller countries are led by, and we must add, this is an all-male panel. And uh, I was telling Funko, I think that the last time I was on Horasis, it was an all-female panel. And I happen to be the lucky chairperson of that panel. But we must lay, uh, we must give credit to the ladies uh, who are leading countries uh, with great foresight, and many of them are doing very well. Uh, they have been recognized uh, as as uh, better leaders in many ways, and the men must acknowledge that women have higher levels of emotional intelligence. So we must throw up more leadership from the women folk. After all, they are uh, important stakeholders in the world, and uh, those countries which are not nurturing. Leaders from uh, women, they should do so. Education levels are still, uh, there's a lot of disparity and there is a lot of difficulty in uh, educating uh, the masses. Awareness levels are uh, abysmally different from uh, each other. There are people who are already in the 22nd, 23rd century, if I may say so. And there are people who are, uh, you know, they are still living in the 18th with with their developmental levels being uh, so, so uh, low uh, par. And, and what we need to do probably is to keep talking, keep uh, confabulating, communicating, discussing. And uh, if, if organizations such as Horasis can play this role, they, they're doing a yeoman's job in uh, bringing the world closer together and removing some of the misapprehensions, removing some of the misgivings. And uh, Alfredo was uh, reiterating what I said. I mean, uh, operating in silos is not the way forward. When we are in a global information free era, then why are uh, minds so parochial and why are they so limited in their perspective? So uh, these were the thoughts that I had uh, towards the end. And having listened to all of you, I must thank you, gentlemen. Firstly, for your content. I know that two of you are uh, wide awake in the US. It's past midnight or about midnight. (laughs) And Fulco and I are probably a little better off. I'm in midday and uh, Fulco is early morning or something in the in Europe in Netherlands. So all of you, I must um, uh, thank you. I hope we, can, we stay in touch, all of us. Uh, we can have another discussion uh, privately, if you like, sometime uh, without telling Frank, uh, which I'm just joking, of course. So all of us can have a picture as well, if you don't mind. Uh, there is a provision here for a group fee. So please smile and I'll just click the picture now. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. One more. One more. Yeah, there it goes. One sec. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. It's been lovely to meet you and lovely to listen to you. I hope that we achieve and attain what we have set out to do. So thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.